the LTK Distinguished Service Award was established in 1973 to honor one of the floral industry's finest leaders, Leland T. Kinsel. As the sales manager for Denver Wholesale Florist, Lee was well known for his knowledge of the floral industry and for the energy and enthusiasm displayed toward his lifelong career. A tireless advocate for the floral industry, Lee supported WF and FSA in many capacities, including three terms as president from 1963 to 1966. During his tenure, Lee did a great deal to advance the association as well as the entire wholesale floral industry. It is that spirit that we celebrate today. Sam Pennock, the first recipient of the LTK Distinguished Service Award, was honored in 1973. Since that time, 27 outstanding individuals have received this coveted award. John Henry Dudley, Yoshimi Shibata, George Wolf Jr., O. Ben Haley, Robert Dewey, Oscar Carlstedt, P.S. Cook, John Van Hanford, Harrison Kennicott Jr., Donald Hook, Vernon Smithers, William Arnett, Jacob Van Neyman, James Nordley, Frank Kuahara, Mabel Caprude Simmons, Knut Nielsen Jr., E.O. Brody, William Belden, Herman Minders, Walter Preston, Pete Garcia, Jules Armellini, Del DeMarie Jr., Erwin H. Wader, Neil E. Kanai, Harrison Red Kennicott. These four words are the cornerstones of the LTK Distinguished Service Award. Each recipient was chosen because they displayed these characteristics in a way that set them apart from their contemporaries. Those honored by this prestigious award have their names etched into a sterling silver perpetual tray that is kept at WF and FSA headquarters in Annapolis, Maryland. Whose name will be added this year? With each crop, flowers have the chance to start anew while standing tribute to the blossoms that came before. As flowers bloom and fade, they leave seeds that will sprout forth a new generation of brilliant beauty. The same can be said for families. Each generation learns from those before and sets out to make their own mark on this world. In the case of Jose Maria Pepe de la Torre, the seeds of social awareness were deep-rooted and his mark on the world would be long-lasting and profound. Born in Bogota, Colombia, Pepe was greatly influenced by his grandmother, Lucrecia Lago, who believed that their family had a duty to help those less fortunate. She believed that Pepe had the strength and ability to change lives. On that foundation was built a belief that family, education, and business would be the cornerstones of his life and would allow him to fulfill the destiny of his generation. His love of education led the young Pepe to a degree in business administration from both the School of Business Administration at Gimnasio Moderno and the University of Michigan. While studying in the U.S., a group of friends from Colombia began to contemplate how to make life better and easier for those in their country. It has been said that nature knows no difference between flowers and weeds. When given the same light and the same water, both flourish. The friends from Colombia saw that the same was true for education. Education knew no difference between the privileged and those not so privileged. When given the same access to education and the same support, both flourish. The reality of the university system in Colombia was one of politics with the focus on striking and political change and not traditional studies. The utopian setting where students were free to study without political interference simply did not exist. That is, until the group of friends returned from the U.S 
to found the University of Los Andes, now one of the eminent universities in Colombia. During the first five years, Pepe served as the first Secretary General and Treasurer, and over 50 years later, still is a member of the Board of Trustees. In the 1980s, Pepe established the Colegio Los Nogales in Bogota, a high school that provided a better education to young adults. As the president of the Board of Trustees, he is proud to have started one of the best schools in the country. On a more fundamental level, illiteracy was a problem that plagued Pepe. Because of the mountainous terrain, access to schools was not an option, with the nearest school a two to three hour walk for many students. His constant interest in education led him to work with Acción Cultural Popular, a nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing education to the remote areas of Colombia. One of the main tools used by ACPO was the Radiophonic School. The school developed a system of transmitting academic information to students via radio signals. A newspaper that was the third largest in Colombia printed books, and record factories all played a part in this unique program. Through his efforts, the illiteracy rate has been reduced, and the Colombian government and other institutions have joined the fight to give everyone the same access to education. While serving the fledgling University of Los Andes, Pepe entered the business world with a successful chewing gum factory. Building on that success, he was involved with Taleres Centrales, a large group of factories in Bogota, where he started the commercial division of electrical appliance sales throughout Colombia. When he met the beautiful Maria Blanche, granddaughter of German and French ambassadors, his attention turned to starting the next generation. After some years, Pepe left Taleres Centrales and dedicated himself to his father's business of agriculture and real estate. In the early 1970s, the World Bank commissioned a study showing that the Sabana de Bogota possessed the best soil in which to grow cut flowers. Pepe seized the opportunity to bring the flower industry to South America, with Colombia leading the way. It is this vision and his motivation and spirit that we honor today. Starting with two companies, four farmers, an importing company based in the United States, and Florex, a growing operation based in Colombia, the flower industry was the perfect way to cultivate two passions, business and Colombia. The name Four Farmers developed when in 1972, friends from four different countries, Italy, Denmark, the United States, and Colombia, began the cultivation of 12 modest acres. Those 12 acres grew to one of the 10 largest companies in Colombia, creating a dynasty that has forever changed the country. Eventually, Four Farmers was bought by Dole and became part of Dole Fresh Flowers, the largest producing company of cut flowers in the world, employing more than 11,000 workers. There is a close relationship between flowers and social consciousness. One begins as seeds of nature that sprout into flowers, and the other begins as the seeds of inspiration that sprout into gifts, talents, and resources. A so-called Flores, which was founded in 1973, is the Colombian Association of Flower Exporters, which helped create ProFlora, Flor Verde, Flower Promotion Organization, and the Colombia Flower Council to improve the social and environmental conditions of the Colombian flower sector while creating demand for its products. From pesticide reduction and water conservation to housing, child care, and literacy, Asoco Flores fights to increase the quality of life of flower workers, their families, and communities. Asoco Flores constantly looks for opportunities to promote the year-round marketing of flowers, rather than just around specific dates. Most recently, the organization, in cooperation with California growers, created a campaign to help position flowers as the perfect home decoration, rather than gifts for special occasions. Colombia now accounts for two-thirds of the cut flowers imported by the United States and employs roughly 130,000 people. Flower producers use 4,500 hectares to grow over 50 varieties of flowers. On a typical day, 30,000 boxes of flowers are shipped from Colombia. In the past 10 years, the value of these exported flowers has doubled 
and now stands at about one billion dollars. The flourishing floral industry brought worldwide attention to Colombia. Pepe has worked with heads of state, dignitaries, and presidents. He is one of the best known faces of the Colombian flower growers in the United States, serving as the spokesman for Colombia at floral industry events. Pepe helped to facilitate negotiations and developed organizations dedicated to increased flower production. He continues to be active in the industry, serving on the board of directors of the Society of American Florists. Always the gentleman, Pepe represents the Colombian growers with dignity and treats workers with respect. The lives of those who work in and around the industry have been greatly improved. There are now homes owned, communities created, adult illiteracy reduced, and children in record numbers attending schools that are furnished with necessary books and supplies. Pepe and Maria's four children, Joaquin, Nicolas, Lorenzo, and Camila, share their parents' passion for education, and each holds degrees. Joaquin and Lorenzo work in the floral industry. Nicolas works in Barcelona, Spain, and Camila practices law in Colombia. They also share the love of family with the latest generation of De La Torre children, eight grandchildren, ranging in age from infancy to 16 years of age. Family, education, and business. These three words shape the life of Jose Maria Pepe De La Torre. He in turn shaped the world around him, planting seeds that will continue to support his efforts as the next generation and the next fulfill their destiny in brilliant beauty.